In the previous part of this pre presentation, we looked at the past and present of interoperable OGC standards. Now we look forward. In my opinion, the future of interoperability is to evolve OGC standards for participation in Web 2.0 Plus. OGC is very active in this area. OGC web services are currently being extended to become RESTful, REST being part of the architecture of Web 2.0. OGC is also looking to geo-enable popular web formats. RSS and Atom are good examples of this. OGC has produced a white paper describing how to geo-enable RSS and Atom and later on I'll give a demonstration of this capability. AtomPub is a RESTful specification for data management services and OGC is looking to AtomPub as the RESTful API for WFS, CSW and other OGC data standards. Another emerging topic is volunteer generated information or VGI, also known as crowdsourcing, and social networking such as Twitter or Facebook. OGC is already on top of this trend with the forthcoming geosynchronization service standard, which enables crowdsourcing for WFS and will eventually enable crowdsourcing for other OGC data management standards as well. Another important topic in Web 2.0 is publication and notification, that is, being able to notify automatically interested parties whenever events of interest occur. The Pub Substandards Working Group is currently hard at work producing an OGC standard in this area. In the first part of the presentation, I asserted that two important characteristics of SDI are scalability and availability. Cloud computing is a means of achieving these goals, and OGC is looking at how to deploy OGC web services into the cloud. Finally, OpenSearch is a Web 2.0 standard that people use every day and are probably not even aware of it. If you are using the Firefox browser, the little search box that appears in the upper right is in fact an open search client. Open search abstracts out the search interfaces of a large number of search engines, thus allowing an open search client to direct queries to a large number of engines without necessarily knowing the specific query API of each service. CSW 3.0 makes use of OpenSearch and in fact OpenSearch is the standard query API that all CSW 3.0 compliant services must provide. The next version of WFS will also use OpenSearch as its standard query interface. So, as you can see, OGC is evolving its suite of web services to hook into the web at large. Now, I would like to illustrate how an OGC web service can be integrated into Web 2.0 by giving a small demonstration of Atom that has been geo-enabled. First, let's review what an Atom feed or an RSS feed is. Everyone is familiar with feeds, RSS feeds or Atom feeds. You can see the bottom of my screen here. I have a, a, a scrolling ticker that is accessing RSS data or RSS feeds. Um, if you go to any news website, uh, I'm going to go to the CBC since I'm Canadian. You can usually find somewhere on the page a link that will take you to the RSS feeds that that website offers. So looking here at the CBC page and scrolling to the bottom, we see right here that they have RSS feeds and if we click on them, we can see which feeds are available. So I'm interested in technology and science, so I hit that feed 
and you'll notice that the browser has read the RSS feed that CBC makes available and has rendered it nicely on the screen. We can view the source and this is what the XML of an Atom feed or an RSS feed, their equivalent things, looks like. Okay, so now let's try to get an OGC service, specifically the WFS, to generate an Atom feed. So I've bookmarked a previously formulated WFS request. So this request is accessing a WFS. You can see here it says service equals WFS. It's getting some airport facility information from a, a VMAP level zero data set that this WFS is serving. And it's requesting that the output be Atom. And just like in the case of the CBC RSS feed, the browser, Firefox in this case, is able to render that response into a form that is easily consumable by human readers. Now, even more than this, we can take this Atom response that's coming out of the WFS and we can paste it into Google Maps. And now Google will render it for us in a different form. So rather than getting tabular, uh, a tabular response like we do in, in the default case for Firefox, Google Maps can take this Atom feed and render it onto a map. So we see here that we have two airports in the Christchurch area. So what have we done? Well, what, have we, what we've done is we've accessed a WFS. We've told the WFS to get some data for us, but rather than give it to us in the standard GML, to give it to us in Atom that has been geo-enabled as described in OGC's white paper. The browser that I'm using, Firefox, can take that Atom and render it in tabular format, but doesn't really make use of the geo-enabled part of the Atom feed. So, instead of using the browser to render it, I can take that exact same WFS request that generates the Atom response, plop it into Google Maps, and have Google render it, but this time Google takes advantage of the geo-enablement and actually plots the entries, the Atom entries, onto a map. So you can see here we have two airports in Christchurch and if I click on the place mark the data associated with each uh, location is presented in a tabular format. This is all Google rendering in this case and in the previous case it was just Firefox rendering. So what we've done now is we've taken an OGC service and we've linked it into the web at large by using a standard web format known as Atom. This concludes my presentation. I would like to thank you for taking the time to listen and I hope that it was helpful. Thank you very much.